Welcome back to Let's Play The Evil Within with me, Jerupidus. And today we are tackling what I would describe as probably the most difficult chapter in the game. I've been dreading this since we started the playthrough, so why don't we get right to it? <laughs> oh, come on, Sebastian. Just climb down the ladder. There we go. How many have you killed, Ruben? Ruben? Does he mean Ruvik? Numbers are irrelevant. They received as they themselves gave. And they served a higher purpose. They furthered my research. This was not mere research. The things the papers say were done to those people, those traps. These vermin? These microbes? They're mine to do with as I please. But you are correct. This was not mere research. I'm close to perfection. This is abhorrent. This is my will. And so that's what I meant when I was saying that I don't think Dr. Jimenez really realized the full extent of Ruvik's insanity. He is a deeply, deeply psychotic person. Now let's check out this document. Mansion basement note. My children have been taken from me. Was it fate? Was it something he did? Surely not my perfect son. It was that fire. It ruined everything, took everything. The children are not the same, and neither is Ernesto. He said he was taking care of them, that they were safe, but now he says they're gone. How could that be? A mother would know such a thing. I can still hear my darling boy's voice, his laughter, and always from the basement. It cannot be. A mother needs her children. Now, one thing I want to point out is that the doctor mentions all the traps, and I feel like that's such a hilariously weak explanation for all the silly traps in this game. Like, sometimes you can just let a game be a game and not necessarily try to explain everything, but why don't we hit up Safe Haven? Door. Let's see what's going on with the guy next door if we can. Do you have any idea why this world is the way it is? What? Who are you? Hate. Hate. Ruvik's hate. The man's consumed by it. He wants out! Wants to get his revenge! He wants back what he feels the world took from him. It's not like he could actually get that. <laughs> it's not like he could actually get that. This world exists as long as he does. You heard something just now? Maybe I might have heard something. What's it to you? <laughs> I do love the nurse, though. She's so sassy. All right, I think we've got a couple of keys, but why don't we grab this newspaper first? Wealthy landowner and wife die in car crash. Nightmare for family. Bodies of Ernesto and Beatriz Victoriano found in wreck. Son inherits family fortune. And that, I think, is kind of a big one, where now we're starting to get a picture of sort of how Ruvik has done a lot of the things that he's done, where he had all of the money and staged their death as a car wreck. And I think that fills in a decent bit of uh, plot points for questions that could very readily be asked about what is exactly going on or how did any of these things even happen. Alright, we're all loaded up on that and I've got three keys, so let's go ahead and use them. Green gel, love that. And I suppose we'll start from over here. Extra sniper ammo is nice. And we're full up on those. I think we can take one with us. Okay. And that's going to be it for right now. Nothing too exciting, but the extra green gel is nice. And we're going to go ahead and put that to use right now. If I could go through that door, which I apparently can't right now for no reason at all. <laughs> 
Uh, but we're gonna need every advantage we can possibly get in this chapter. It is no joke. No joke, my friends. We are going to have a time today. All right, we've got 25,000. What do I want to do? We could throw some damage on some things, but I kind of feel like improving my agony bolts. Um, the shock bolts are particularly good, so why don't we just crank those things as best we can? And that's the most we're going to get out of those. And then, I guess we could also do freeze bolts. Flash bolts are also pretty good, but at this point, I just don't feel like we're going to need them particularly. They're not very useful against most of the bosses. They're really only particularly useful against the Sadist. And they're already fine against him, so I think we can leave it for now. And let's just go ahead and get some more damage on the shotgun. Why not? Yeah, and then we'll just spend some uh, cheap ones. I think I like the idea of a little bit faster reload. And sure, why don't we do one more in the clip? That works for me. I will say this, despite the fact that I've complained about the shotgun a lot, I actually have been liking it a little bit better this time playing through. Mostly because my expectations are more in line with what it actually is, so it's less frustrating to use when you already understand that it's going to be more of a knockdown tool than anything else. At least for me. Alright, now let's continue into this area. It's going to be a big old pain. And what will we find down here? We'll go ahead and disarm that, and then... Just over here, we're going to find our first goddess statue. That's going to be our first key for the level. There are going to be four keys, including this one, and three map fragments. ton of green gel in here. That is nice. Uh, can I take that with me? Let's find out. Nope. All right. And so basically what we're going to have to deal with in here is a whole bunch of traps. Um, which is fitting because the doctor just mentioned the traps. That very, very flimsy explanation for them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize there was that horrible coughing sound and then like a circle saw starting up. And to be perfectly honest, I don't remember the midsection of this level particularly because... Ah, right. Because the end is filled with so much pain. <laughs> Now, however hard I may try to stealth this section, I'm going to get caught. Can I just please disarm this? Come on, game. It keeps popping up and then going away. There we go. Now, I'd really like to try to stealth... But it never works. I'm curious if he's going to trip that or not. No, he does not. Okay. And then maybe I can get him? Mm. 
Nope. Every time. Now this is going to start a extremely surreal sort of carnival scene. This is insane. And it is insane. And it's kind of great. I think that it really does a lot when it comes to making this part insanely surreal. I just want to make sure I'm doing a good job of checking these areas. But while we're in this center area, we need to be crouching. Which means I really don't want to disarm this when the blade is close to coming by. Because you can get decapitated there just by disarming that and picking up the thing. If you're not careful with your crouch button. Which I sometimes am not, but also... Sometimes the crouch button doesn't cooperate the way you'd like, and it will take an extra little bit of time to, uh, crouch. And there's also going to be a sniper shooting at me, so this area is really rife with problems. So let's go ahead and get out our sniper rifle and see if we can't snipe him back. Okay, I gotta wait for him to pop up. See if I can hit this shot. 100% crit chance. Love it. But those snipers are one of the big problems I have with the enemy design. I know I've kind of touched on it already, but I don't find a sort of zombie-like creature with a sniper rifle scary. It's just kind of weird and out of place. Something like this where you can hear them in the distance is great. It plays with your your sense of anticipation. You know, you're not sure when you're going to run into them. This is fine. Oh, I really want to go for this, but I think I'm just going to wait. Just does not seem like a good idea to head in just yet. But I think I am going to get a little further down. Just in case he comes all the way out. Okay, I think I can actually get pretty close then. But you want to really watch it for this shotgun one. This guy is by far the biggest threat. Ooh. Did he just get back up? I felt like I heard one get up right next to me. Okay. It was a different one. I was like, impossible. Oh. All right, that actually went really smoothly. I'm very happy with that. So what we need to do in here is our way forward is a little bit blocked, and we need to grab this battery over here and basically stick it in somewhere else, and then that will allow us to get out of here. So the battery pack, this large portable storage cell, can be used to get electrical equipment working in an emergency. I, I feel like we're in the middle of an emergency right now in this nightmare circus that we find ourselves in. Now, I feel like I recall getting ambushed on the way back out of here because anytime you pick up a key item, they're going to throw some new stuff at you. So I think what I'm going to do is pop out this way because if I recall, yep, there he goes. There's going to be another sniper... And I'm just going to watch my back. Oh my god, am I not in cover? <laughs> am I in cover now? Okay, great. <laughs> I'm going to actually... I'm going to back up, because I don't want to get killed by Mr. Certainly Not Scary at All Sniper. Let's go ahead and increase our health bar.
And once this animation is over, we'll go ahead and counter snipe. I feel like I hear one behind me, but. Oh, that's the wrong gun. There we go. Okay. Now we are gonna have some friends to greet us on the way out of here, of course. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm ready. Never did break these on the way here. I was so focused on trying to actually stealth it. I so routinely fail every stealth part that you could possibly stealth in this that I'm just... Genuinely pleasantly surprised that that went as well as it did. I mean, honestly, we're pretty good at handling basic enemies now. But the fact remains that no matter how good you may get at it, they still are pretty dangerous. And do you see how slow that crouch was? That was stay away. Oh. <laughs> Did I just trip a wire? I don't even know what I tripped. Now, can I crouch in time? <laughs> All right. All right. Now, I want to make sure that I explore to my left. Because um, there's going to be a few things. That scared me a little bit. I thought for sure I was just going to pop up and get decapitated. Yeah, it must have been one of those. What a dummy! I usually don't uh, run into too many traps, but I feel like it would be pretty difficult to complete this entire game without ru without running into a few of them. Now there's going to be just one green gel in the corner. And now we can continue on. See if we can't stealth this a bit. Yeah, I feel like there's one more. Um, so let's see. That's even a shotgun one. Let's kill him. All right. We are in good shape then. Let's finish looting in here. Ooh. <laughs> that was literally right on the line. My eyes got really big for a second. I didn't mean to kick him, but I also don't mind. Your melees kind of do whatever they want sometimes, which is always unfortunate. All right, just making sure, yep. Why wouldn't there be another one? Okay. Let's go ahead and pop this in. And that is going to let us out of here. It's also making a ton of noise, which, you know, you never love, but there's nothing you can do about it. You're like, can't we just be quieter?
but I'm pretty sure it's just smooth sailing on the way out of here now. All right, now that uh, Crazy Carnival Fun Town is over, we have a couple of things we want to find in here. A little bit of green gel there. And this map fragment here, we definitely want to pick up. That's the first one, number 18. Getting some real work done on those, but there are a lot of them. Now, <laughs> we're about to meet a brand new enemy, and it's a pretty sweet design, but these things legitimately scare me a little bit. What the? What the indeed? Those are called traumas, and I always do that because it's not clear which direction you're supposed to hit, but it is down. There we go. And fortunately, he's not going to bother us for a little while, but he will be bothering us eventually. Oh boy, this part is good. I like this part of the chapter a lot, this first sort of segment. But you're going to see why it ends up pretty terrible fairly soon. Now this is a little bit of a trap, so we're going to have just enough time. Oh, come on, pistol. We're going to have just enough time to go in there, grab that, and then the green gel in the corner. So let's get to it. Uh, what? That's supposed to come down. Huh. <laughs> well, as you can see, uh, we find ourselves in sort of a nightmarish environment where there are all kinds of spinning blades and different traps all over the place. And so this area is really cool and really well designed because... It's kind of a slow burn. Just gonna go ahead and use the healing item since I can. Where you get a look at all this stuff around you, right? Stuff like this, and you're like, what is gonna happen? And believe me, it's gonna pop off like crazy, but let's keep going for right now. Can't push that just yet. There's going to be a whole bunch of enemies in here. And we're going to try to stealth this as best we can, but it's really hard because of all of the different lines of sight to... I don't even know what that was. Well, they're already aggroed on me, so let's get the shoddy out. You know what, let's pistol this. Oh, I thought that bomb was going to explode on me. Well, that worked fairly well. Despite the fact that we aggroed literally everyone in here instantly. I feel as though I've been doing a pretty good job of stealth, but that was not the best. <laughs> Make sure we're reloaded. I still hear a whole bunch of them, so we still have our work cut out for us. And it's funny because I always failed this part, but I feel like this is a really good section to try to stealth because there are so many different rooms and so many ways through this place. I feel like that one just saw me. So let's get back here where everything's in front of us. Yep. Okay. 
But yeah, I pretty much always disappoint myself in here because what I was gonna show is that right around this way, you know, there's a little crack in the wall you can come through. There's this wall you can hide behind. This seems like a cool little stealth playground. I just always screw it up instantly and have like 13 enemies chasing me. Yep. <laughs> Fortunately, basic enemies are... We're pretty used to dealing with them by now. So something like that is not going to be too much of a concern. But let's make sure we finish looting in here. It sounds pretty quiet, so I think I've gotten everyone. And one thing that we definitely want to do is make sure that we're disarming all of the traps that we possibly can on our first pass here. Now, when I say it's a stealth playground, I do mean that. But it's also a huge maze. And believe me, when the pop-off comes and you're running for your life... Uh, it's real easy to get turned around in here and just have no idea where you are. Well, what I'm gonna do is kind of keep progressing. And kill every single thing that I can. Uh, just to make sure that when the time comes, uh, this area is as harmless as possible. All right, so did we find ourselves back at the beginning now? Ah, we're still in here. The visibility is low, and the layout is confusing. Which is kind of a perfect level design for a game like this, I think. <laughs> it really it really drives the uh, absolute panic going through your mind once you get swarmed uh, home, because you have no idea if the room you're about to run into is a dead end. Okay, so now we've got to grab this key item and let's go ahead and do it. And now we're going to want to go back where we just were. In the kind of a uh, smoky area. <laughs> At least I'm pretty sure that's true. Yep, we gotta be getting close if we just hit a checkpoint. So, here we go. This is what we want. Let's make sure not to trip this. And let's go ahead and pop it in there. So that door that we couldn't pull the lever on before is where we've got to get back to, and believe me, now this area is about to pop off. But I think that's going to do it for today, and we'll get to the exciting part next time. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.